At Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. And since Lida was near Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he had come, they brought him to the upper room, and all the widows stood by him, weeping, showing the tunics and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. Verse 40, But Peter put them all out, and knelt down, and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Then he gave her his hand, and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, he presented her alive. Lord, bless. Great edification you bring to our servants and for our lives. Lord, speak to your word, to our hearts, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. My beloved sisters. Here is one of the greatest and glorious moments lived by the primitive lived by the primitive church. I know that the sisters here I'm sure know the Bible much better than I. But the Bible has this moment and passages there are uh, landmarks in our lives because the whole word of the Lord the entire word from Genesis to Revelations it's revealed nothing written here was written by chance everything that has a prophetic meaning very well so the church uh, the primitive church was at its highest point living glorious moments in which many miracles are being were being operated everywhere through the ancients like Peter, James, John, and even sometimes even through the Apostle Paul that in this time of Acts he had his meeting with Jesus and he had a true conversion. And I see the Bible the only real conversion that I see in the Bible is the conversion of Paul. It was in the time of the primitive church, the church of Acts of the, of the Apostles. Very well. So what happened here? Everywhere God operated. Miracles and wonders, Paul, Silas, and remove, taking servant Peter from prison. Blind were cured, lame walked. We have the example of the beautiful door or example of the one that was lame and I have no silver gold but he asked them to get up and you walked so we have many miracles that are described here in the primitive church but see what happened Apostle Peter has always happened he received a revelation and instruction from the Lord to go to the region uh, of the city of Lida a small city and said there is a necessity there go there and Peter went and he didn't know what was the necessity of this city but when he arrived in Lida moved by the Holy Spirit he went to a city to a, a town to a man called Inez he was sick almost dying and Peter sent by the church moved by the Holy Spirit went to the jail and said, Anais, 
Jesus Christ sending you health. Go to God. And at this very moment, he got up. When Jesus sends health, whoever has faith gets up. And whoever doesn't have faith gets even worse. But who has faith gets up immediately. Uh, no matter how serious your problem is, if you have faith, the Lord operates wonders. So then Peter, he did what the glorified the house of Anas was happy. So Anas who was sick now is well and nearby the city of Lida, there was another city called Jope. Lida was near to Jope. It was a distance, uh, I would say, a couple of hours of walking. And in Job, there was a servant of the servant of the Lord, who she was known as Dorcas. Her name was Tab Tabitha, but she was known as Dorcas. And what did that servant do? What is her? What was her, her job? It was to pray, to give support and help the people, everyone, especially the widows. People that didn't have any help, she gave them help. She prepared clothing for them. They would never lack anything. That was the work of Dorcas. Uh, job doing the work of the Lord in the way the Lord instructed her. People were very happy, glad for the work that she did. And the Bible says, that in the word I read in verse 36, that. Dorcas got sick and died. She died. And I, I want the system to imagine the social, social uh, unrest of the widows when they saw that their hopes had been lost because of the, the work that they received from Dorcas. Their her support, her attention, Dorcas died. <coughs> and normally when somebody died, they prepared the wake immediately and brought them to the tomb. But God had a blessing to operate in that city in the same way that he operated in Lida in the city of uh, uh, Dias. So now let us bury Dorcas. Let us put her here. There is a high room here. And then later we're going to bury her properly. So that at that moment, when that happened, there was the, this great disturbance in the city. They said, Apostle Peter, he's here. He's just very nearby. He went there. The Lord prayed in the life and ass. Everybody knew an ass. In Job, people knew an ass. He operated. Janaz is cured. So now run there and call him here. Immediately, you see, if, if it is a miracle, call the servants of the Lord to hear. So then, two, two men went there and said, "Peter, see that Job is is mourning. It, it happened that there is a woman, a woman that the Lord loves, uh, an old woman. She made a lot of charity. She did uh, wonderful social work there under the direction of the Lord, and now it happened that she died." She died. And they asked you to go there urgently to see if, if the Lord has something to do for her. And the word says that Peter immediately went with them to the city of Job. And when they got there, uh, the confusion, everybody knew Peter because they knew the miracles that the Lord had occurred in their life. People ran after him, the widows were crying and saying, Peter, as ask God to give us a blessing. We cannot live without Dorcas. Lord, do something, Peter. And Peter said, calm down, calm down. She is in the high bedroom. So, everybody went up and he said, no, I, I want to enter into the bedroom alone. So he entered into the bedroom and according to the direction of the Spirit, according to the, what the Lord had told him, he said, Tabitha, get up. And she opened up her eyes and got up. And Peter glorified the Lord. And she glorified the Lord. She opened up the door and said, and he said, here is she. She's alive. 
you can imagine the joy that happened there. Many people cried of sadness. Now they're crying of joy. Amen. Very well. So the sister might say, "Hey, I didn't understand until now. Why Pastor Elias came from Brazil to tell this little story for us?" <laughs> uh, if I read in the Bible, I would see it. No, but the Lord sent me to tell this little story for you. The Lord sent me here to uh, deliver a revelation. Amen. I don't want anybody to raise your hand. I want to ask you if you believe in revelation. Who believes in revelation? Because who doesn't believe in revelation? They say what they are not supposed to. They do what they are supposed to, and send the Holy Spirit. But whoever walks in revelation receives blessings and brings joy to the Holy Spirit. The Lord asked me to tell you, the Dorcas represents. The work of the women. This work that you do here, praying for the ministry, for the sick, for the problem of the church, for the necessities, and how many joys, we, how many blessings we receive. There are fruit of your prayer. Now I ask the church here, to everyone here, and what if this work is taught? Who is going to intercede for us? Who is going to cry for us? Who's going to spend five minutes kneeling down, pleading for us? And the Lord told me to tell you this, Dorcas. She can't die. Amen. Dorcas cannot die. Dorcas is work the women. The work of the women can never stop. It's something that comes from heaven, a revelation from God. It's a blessing for the church, for the minister, for the pastor, for the ushers, for the deacons. For the homes, for the families, it's a blessing. How can this work uh, die? That's why, my beloved, the fact that you are here tonight, you didn't come uh, here just by chance. It's a miracle of God. It's a miracle of God. How many of you would not even be able to be here, but you are here? You are because you love the the work of the Lord, love the Lord, and believe in the power of God. Believe that God operates miracles and wonders. So the word is this: tonight, darkness cannot die. The work that the the sister do here cannot die. If some of you contribute to that would to something that will bring death. The Lord will raise other. Servants that are dedicated, that obey, that pray and cry and wait for the blessing of the Lord. He can do this, but the Lord will not allow this work to die. The work of the women of the Lord and this work that we live in is a miracle. It is a miracle. Believe in this. The sisters don't have any idea of how much God loves this work. How much God blessed the, the servants. I know that God blessed me, but I go through so many trials. Exactly, it's with trial. It's with trial that we'll walk towards eternity. It's not easy. It's crying. It's affliction, and God operates wonders and miracles because without trials there is no miracle. Without trial there is no miracle. Amen. So, don't complain. Don't murmur. I say, Lord, operate a wonder. Speak with me a miracle. Because I, I don't want darkness to die in me. I want more and more to be in your presence, my beloved sisters. Write it down. Darkness cannot die. Let's glorify the name of the Lord. Let us pray the name of the Lord.
Oh, yes. This is the place of those that are ready to serve the Lord. The victory will come. The miracle will always come. Bring Peter here because he is used in, by the hand of the Lord. Bring Peter here. And Peter went and he gave the order. Tabitha, get up. The Lord tonight is blessing this, the women here. He's telling the servants here, get up in prayer, in praises, seeking the Lord, early dawns in fasting. And you will be courageous, strong, and victorious. Blessed be the name of the Lord. They're going to be here praying for the women. You're going to do a position of and laying of hands, all the service of the Lord. Hello. Glory to God. My servants, keep in your hearts the word that I brought to you tonight live by it in it and you will see many miracles not only for those that you are praying for but even for yourself for your homes for your husbands your children with your relatives I will be laying my hand upon you continually to bless you and I will be I will make you more than victorious I'm your God hear my word keep it in your heart practice it because it is deliverance it's a miracle it's power it's grace it is salvation adore your God keep this my daughters because I want to use you with great power do not allow to things that do not please in my name and reproach anything that goes against my doctrine and my revelation so that you may be victorious and be vessels used by my hands for the honor and glory and praise of your God I am the Lord I bless you and I give you power Hallelujah. we praise the Lord we glorify you. We give praise for this love of a servant, for this church, for your people, Lord. Involve us, Lord, in your merciful arms of your grace, Lord. And make us more than victorious. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, and your infant and glorious love and the sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit be upon us, upon your church, upon your servants, now and forever. Amen, Jesus. Amen. Amen, my sister. Our meeting is over. Peace of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, God.